Aloha and welcome to our video on gymnosperms and angiosperms. Um, the goals today will describe the features of the phylum coniferophyta and the anthophyta. In the phylum coniferophyta or the gymnosperms, what we're talking about is we have seeds that are open. They're naked seeds. They're not wrapped up. They're not protected. Um, is a seed part and we'll talk about that a little bit. Now this is a plant. It does have a root system that you'll see underground. There are stems to it and we do have needle-like leaves. Most of the leaves are gonna be this way. Um, these tend to stay green all year round. And the reason these needle leaves work well is because unlike a traditional leaf that we're thinking about, these needles are able to withstand a little bit more extremes in temperature. So they're actually able to use photosynthesis year round, not like some of our other trees where they drop their leaves in the winter time. Now the conifera phyta are named so because of these cones that they have. And this is where we see seeds and this is where we see reproduction happening. So we'll actually have male and female plants. And if you notice, sometimes in the spring, the pollen will be spread out and you'll see an awful lot of that yellow pine pollen everywhere. Now, when we're talking about this, what we're talking about is here we have our cone here and it'll open up when it's time to release the seeds. And we'll see the seeds here and they're exposed. This gymnosperm means naked seed. So you can see that it's not wrapped up in anything. The cone will provide a little bit of protection. The scale will provide a little bit of protection, but the seed itself is kind of open and exposed out to the environment. And this is what makes them the gymnosperms or the naked seeds. Now, unlike the gymnosperms, we have the angiosperms and the phylum anthophyta. And the angiosperms are gonna be the seeds that are protected per se. And we'll see that down here where we see our seeds down here. But now these are going to be protected by a fruit. So you can see how the seeds are wrapped up inside of something. It gives a little bit of protection. It can give a little bit of nutrients. It also helps with seed transport. Now in the anthophyta, we have the flowering plants. And that's kind of important for us because we do have these flowers. And the flowers are basically their organ for reproduction. Um, what we have is the stamen over here. And then we'll have the pistil part over here. The stamen is going to be the male part. We'll have a little filament here and you can see it extending up this way. And on top of it, we have the anther and that's where they have the male pollen. Okay. So like the sperm, so to speak, is going to be right there. Now, if I'm a bug or a bird or something that's coming in to pollinate here, I'm going to get this pollen on me from this anther. And what's going to happen is then I'll go to another flower and I'll feed off of this stigma part here which is kind of sticky. And when I stick my face in there to get the nectar out, the pollen that I've gotten from another flower will get stuck to the stigma. It'll transfer down the style here into the ovary where we'll have fertilization. And then this ovary here will swell and ripen into the fruit. So that's how the flowering plants basically work. Now, the flowering plants can be broken down into two groups. What we have is the monocots and the dicots, or monocotyledon and dicotyledon. And that cot part refers to this cotyledon, which is going to be this embryonic leaf. So in the monocots over here, mono means one, so they have one cotyledon. Our dicots on this side will have two of these embryonic leaves in the seeds. Okay, so that's why they're named monocot and dicot. Now the differences between those groups don't just stop with the number of embryonic leaves. If we look at our dicot, generally our flowers of a dicot is gonna have four or five floral parts. Okay, so you'll see on this one here, we have five different parts to the flower, whereas our monocots generally only gonna have three or multiple of three. So in this case, we could have three distinctly orange ones, or we could have six if you add in the yellows as well, but it's a multiple of three nonetheless. The other way you can easily tell between a monocot and a dicot is if we look at the leaf veins. In a monocot, it's going to be all parallel running this way. Okay, so you can see all of the veins going this way, whereas in a dicot, they're going to be net like. And you can see it here where it's more spread out and web looking. Okay, and then finally, the last one I want to mention is how the vascular tissues are going to be bundled and arrayed. In a dicot, it's going to be a ring system. And then when it's a monocot, they're just going to be kind of grouped together. There's no necessary or set pattern. So that's it for this video. Um, it's just a quick overview. You'll get a lot more information in the lessons and good luck on those. And as always, we'll see you in the next video.